Hi, I'm Jason. I'm a horticulturist here at Brook Green Gardens, and I just wanted to take a few moments today to go over a new garden section within the Heron Grass and Loon area that I maintain here at Brook Green. It includes a number of different belts found within the state of South Carolina geologically, including rocks that I've collected personally over the past 27 years. So if you'd like, we can take a closer look and go over some of these sections. So we'll take a closer look now at some of the belts within the actual South Carolina Geologic Garden. You have the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is located half of, in half of this upper elevated area. You also have the Brevard Zone, which is a basement rock found in a very small area within the state that's on display. And then there's the Inner Piedmont Belt, which is the start of the very uh, pretty large Piedmont region that's shown right here and it actually includes some of the mountains the more popular mountains found within the state and these are all geological samples found from all over the state that you see here so now we're located right at the what's called the king's mountain belt and it runs the length of the state and is, is more of the more narrow belts found within the state this would be found up around the North Carolina, South Carolina line. And as we flow this way towards where Georgia and South Carolina meet, it includes a feature called the Loudonsville Fault. So there are examples of the geological rocks found within this belt on display here at Brook Green. And now we're sitting at what's called the Charlotte Belt. This display of rocks is one of the older belts found within the state. A volcanic arc most people think. This area displayed would be typically of some rocks found around the North Carolina South Carolina border and again all the way down to where the belt meets the state of Georgia and it's a really interesting belt with a large history and it helps explains a, explain a lot of the Piedmont Plateau. And so now we're looking at the Carolina Slate Belt within the Piedmont, Piedmont Plateau, which includes many interesting geologic formations, in my opinion. It also includes a disputed area towards the corner bordering the Sand Hills, including the Kiyoki Belt and the Bel Air Belt. So there's different rock samples from this very interesting geological belt found within the state on display here. Okay, so now at this point, we're at an area where the Piedmont Plateau in South Carolina transitions to the coastal plain of South Carolina, which is different in its surface geological structure. You have the rocky Piedmont uh, soil and rocks that have transitioned to what is an Atlantic Ocean um, influenced area that has sediment that is eroded, also eroded off of the Piedmont and the mountains. And this is the area called the fall line where the transition takes place. In the sand hills or the upper, upper coastal plain, you'll see some interesting rock examples that may not be commonly seen at the surface everywhere you walk, but they are around, including this piece of kaolinite, which is uh, a very light colored red and is a very interesting rock to look at. So the last section that we'll take a look at within the South Carolina Geologic Garden includes three areas of the coastal plain. The middle coastal plain, the lower coastal plain, and the coastal zone, which is where Brook Green Gardens is located at. The middle coastal plain is also a very narrow uh, band within the coastal plain. The lower coastal plain and those two are very, uh, they meld together in the natural world, so they kind of do the same thing within the garden. Some of the rocks you'll see include coquina, which is displayed right here, as well as what's called phosphorus rock, which have different shades of color that can be found. And the coastal zone also includes a sample of what our beaches look like, including some of the native shells that many of you are probably familiar with if you've walked along the beaches. So. Be on the lookout for a blog that I'm writing that will contain a lot more detailed information about the history and the geology of the state. I think it'll be an interesting read. 
and also this garden is going to include, just like the rest of Hare and Grass Loon, native plants that are found truly within the state of South Carolina. So we're in the process of getting that planted very soon, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you.